Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, live the life we love. It's Thursday, so it's story day. Today, I'm pulling out one of my fairy tales from Grimm's called Spirit in a Bottle. And I love fairy tales because since you know they're not true, then the metaphoric meaning can get through. Remember, sometimes fiction, we can take a truth and abstract it from it that's deeper than the truth we can learn from nonfiction. Nonetheless, once there was an old woodcutter who just barely was able to get along, uh, but he knew that if he could save some money, he could send his son to school and get a better education. And that, that way, upgrade his life. So he gave him what money he could. Son went to school, did really well in the first couple of semesters. Teachers praised him for his learning. But when your money runs out, the education runs out. And so the son had to come home. And the father says, well, what are you going to do now? The son said, well, I thought maybe I'd work with you. I said, you work with me? Look at your hands. They're pink. You've not done a, a hard day's work in your life. You want to decide. Besides, I have no axe. The son said, well, borrow an axe from our neighbor, and then the work will go twice as fast. Well, against his own better judgment, the father said, okay. He borrowed an axe and went out to the woods, and started chopping the wood. But, of course, if you've ever worked with a wooden handle on an old axe, your calloused hands get roughed up right away. So the kid's hands were just, oh, just oh, raw and red. Oh, Dad, listen, I can't work anymore. He says, I told you this wouldn't be a good idea. We haven't even worked a half a day and already you're, you're done. Why don't you sit down and have some lunch? So the kid said, I don't want to sit down and have some lunch. I'd rather go out and look for bird's nests. The father thought, oh, this is what his college education did. So the son goes off and he's looking around up in the trees and stuff. Like that. And all of a sudden he comes to a big oak tree. It is so big. How big was it? Three or four people holding hands in a wide circle. That would encompass the oak. It was massive. And the, and the son was thinking, gee, I wonder how many bird's nests have been in this tree over the years. And then as he's walking by, he thought he heard something. He was kind of faint at first, but he definitely thought he heard something. And basically it was a voice saying, let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Kind of peeked him. Where's that coming from? And he looked down at the roots of the tree, and there was this little bottle. And inside this glass bottle was a, like a mannequin figure, almost like a frog, hopping up and down. He said, let me out. Let me out. I'll give you a reward. He said, hmm, that's interesting. Well, what would you do? Popped up in the bottle, and all of a sudden, this huge plume of smoke came up just like you'd see in the genie in Aladdin's lamp. That's that oh, huge guy, almost as big as the tree. He said, thank you. And the son said, now what for my reward? He said, my reward is going to strangle you. He said, what? He said, you didn't think they put me in there because I was a nice guy, did you? I'm Mercurius. And now get ready to meet your maker. And the son said, wait a second. Uh, I don't mind dying, but I just have to say, I can't believe that somebody as big as you, as boisterous as you, as loud and mean as you was ever in that bottle. What do you mean? You don't think I spit words of truth? Well, you get back in the bottle and show me you were there and then I'll believe you. Well, the genie goes gets back into the bottle because his pride is insulted. Boy takes the cork, puts it on the top, throws the bottle away, and immediately goes, wait, 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 don't go away, don't go away. I promise I'll give you something if you let me out. And the son thinks, well, he's a kind of stupid spirit. I was able to trick him the last time and probably could trick him again that maybe he will give me a reward. So what would you do? He opened the bottle a second time. And then said, all right, now what's my reward? Eugenie said, take this cloth. If you touch this side to anything, it'll heal any wound. And if you touch the other side of the cloth to anything, it'll turn into the best silver you can possibly imagine. The son said, wait there. He takes his axe, smashes the tree, puts the side that does the healing against the tree, and the gash completely covers over. Good as new. Says, Thank you very much. He walks away. He doesn't see that he puts the cloth in his backpack and it touches the axe, and the axe turns completely silver. By the time he gets back to his father, his father says, the whole day is lost. You're good for nothing. Come on, let's work now. So he takes his axe. He hits it against the tree. But because it's silver, it crumples in half. And the father says, oh, now look what you've done. Oh, God, just get out of here and go home. And the son says, I can't go home. We're in the middle of the forest. I don't know where we are. You'll have to take me with you. Oh, God. So the father is livid. And he goes back home. And meanwhile, the son goes to the, to the town jeweler. And he takes the silver axe. He says, how much is this worth? The guy says, this is worth so much, I don't have enough money to cover you, but I'll give you a couple of hundred down payment, and you'll come back later after I get a new shipment, I'm going to be able to pay you more. Fine.
goes back to his father. How much was that axe worth? He said, I own six groschen. He says, well, here's 20 groschen. Give it to your neighbor and also buy him a new axe. And here's 100 groschen. We can get a new house now. And so that's what happened. And he told the father the story. And his father was like amazed. And then he grew to be the most famous healer in the land at the time. Because number one, he didn't have to work for money since he could have silver anytime he wanted. And also it said that he could heal any wound. And he could. And if it wasn't for the fact that death comes to every person, he'd still be healing now.